Women in the Manosphere. It's a tale as old as time itself. But this time around, it's a much more interesting tale, at least in as much as there are many more females participating in the so-called Manosphere. But if you've paid attention over the last couple of years, you know there are a number of large-scale content creators who are vaginally endowed who could be very readily described as participants in the Manosphere and produce, quote-unquote, Manosphere content. Now, this isn't anything new, as I alluded to in the beginning. You might remember many, many years ago, Girl Writes What, Karen Strong, who was also sort of loosely affiliated with the Manosphere, or at least produced content that people in the Manosphere partook of. But the reasons for Karen Strawn being involved are not the same reasons as those we can observe in the current iteration of, and I can only say it this way, female grifters who are taking advantage of gullible and unfortunate men. And it's really disappointing, to be honest. When you think about people like Courtney Ryan or Just Pearly Things, to name just two, there are many others, and you're a man and you actually think these women have your best interests at heart, then something has gone gravely wrong in the minds of these men. But to understand why these women cannot possibly have the best interests of men at heart, you really have to understand the basic relationship of men and women and their positions within the species. So I've spent a great deal of time talking about the empathy gap, the lack of care for men, which is patently obvious to anyone who takes the time to pay attention to it. It's not a grand mystery. It's not a secret. It's right there in front of you. You just need to open your eyes, perk up your ears, and pay attention a little bit. So neither men nor women care about men as a rule. However, there are occasionally a few exceptions. Blood relations, usually, on average, will have some sense of care, concern for a person, even a man, because they're related. The degree of care is more often than not related to the degree of relatedness. That's how it works in the animal kingdom, and that's how it works in humankind as well, although we are animals too. So parents are more likely to care for children than our uncles and aunts, than our cousins, etc., etc. So within the context of relatedness, sure, if you're a man, it's not unlikely that your mother cares about your welfare or your fate, or potentially your sister. But that's, of course, a general rule and not a hard and fast rule. And it's a rule that can be and is regularly broken. But if you want to think about the type of females out there that would give a rat's buttocks about you as a man, then yeah, I'd probably reduce it down to your mother, your sister, maybe some other blood relative, although less likely, and that's it. And that's all well and good that maybe your sister and your mother care about your well-being, but we then come to the second issue here, why all these grifters, even if they were well-intentioned, can't really understand you as a man or your concerns or really be concerned for the things that you're concerned about. And that is the inability to relate. Your ability to relate to people is one of, if not the primary reason, why you can connect with people. And another one is common interest. These are the two factors that bind, generally speaking, relatability and common interest. Common interest is less binding because, as I've mentioned many times, you could be interested in lacrosse or John Madden football or Tekken and have absolutely nothing else in common with the person. Relatability comes from your psychology, from your own being, from the particulars of how you tick as an individual. And that's a lot harder to suss out, but it is probably a stronger force than common interest. Now, when it comes to your average woman, let's be perfectly honest here, I'm not even trying to slam on women here. These two factors, the two single most important factors in forming human connection, 
friendship, et cetera, et cetera. Where do you think they're going to be? How much common interest does the average woman have with the average man? And then as far as relatability is concerned, well, relatability comes from psychology, your genetics in large measure, and how the environment has battered you into the being that you are now. So what's the chance that you, the average guy, have much in common with the average female? How much can you relate to, say, Courtney Ryan, who has a massive wedding ring on her finger, who does silly react videos to women, posing as a sympathizer of men's problems? You see, the problem here is the very starting point. And the reason why relatability is going to be so minimal to non-existent when it comes to men and women. The whole manosphere, as much as it fails, as much as it succeeds, whatever it's trying to do is reactive. It's a reaction to what some people call the mating and dating crisis. It started long and ago, as much as it's long before there was, and shall we say, for most enormous various strains, dating and mating crisis. women's requirements, challenges, needs, desires are fundamentally different from those of men's. And so whilst a woman can intellectually understand these things, I mentioned the example of Karen Strawn, Girl That's What, who again, long ago was in part interested because she opposed feminism, and she had a bunch of sons. But her understanding of the male condition was intellectual. And there's nothing wrong with that. There are a lot of things we can intellectually grasp. We can only intellectually grasp the life of blue jays or cardinals because we're not birds. And that's okay. But we can't really relate to them because, again, the prerequisites, requirements, the needs of women are so vastly different from those of men when it comes to the mating dating game because they have a different set of reproductive problems to solve that none of these women posing as sympathizers or even empathizers, even worse, can possibly grasp that. It's just completely alien to them, whatever they might claim. And everyone likes taking a bite of this pie these days. Shoe on head is another one. It's just such an obvious and overwhelming issue that it's impossible to ignore. So everyone's taking a bite of the pie. But these women, whoever they might be, and there are many of them, like I said, they cannot relate to you as a man. They can at best intellectually grasp the condition of being a man, which is okay, but fair enough. But to get back to my original point, my most salient point, why on earth would they care about you as a man? Why are there these guys in the audience who are just lapping it up, thinking that these women are doing something special, and for the most part, are just parodying things they've heard a million times from people, specifically men in the manosphere. Just Pearly Things is a good example of this. She just parrots the same thing over and over and over again from what she heard with no understanding of what's going on, with no understanding of the mechanisms behind it, and people lap it up. The women in the manosphere are not able to relate to men, just like women outside of the manosphere are not able to relate to men. And unless... These women are your mother or your sister. And even then, like I said, sometimes that doesn't even work. Why would they care about you? And even your mother and sister cannot truly understand the reproductive challenges you're facing as a man. So they might be sympathetic and care that you're not doing well, but there's not much they can do. Personally, it's my view that it's always best to stay in your lane as much as possible. This doesn't always have to be the case, but when people, specifically women here, are moving so far outside of their lane to ingratiate themselves to desperate men, you know they don't have good intentions. It's pretty much impossible that they have good intentions. And it's not like they're going to listen to me, but by the gods, man, this isn't an injunction, but you're probably better served checking out other content, not even mine. I'm not saying my content's necessarily special or educational. 
If you think it is, that's great, but maybe it's not. But these female grifters in the manosphere do not have good intentions. It's so obvious. The writing is written all over the wall for you to understand that. Maybe someone will check out this video. In which case, just be aware, these women are not on your side. They can't relate. They don't care. And as I said, what's really pernicious about them is they pretend to. There's nothing worse than pretending to care. I think most of us probably agree with that. Better for someone to be honest, say they don't give a rat's buttocks. But pretending to care, pretending to worry about masses of men that they don't even know from a hole in the wall, they're not related to, it's comical and silly and tragic that so many men fall for this type of propaganda and the poppycock that they spew. Anyway, as always, thank you for tuning in. Many special thanks to my patrons. You guys are the best. Keep the channel going. Much appreciated, as are all the people who donate on the regular PayPal. And if you can engage in the usual YouTube jazz with liking the video, sharing the video, subbing if you're not yet a sub, leaving a comment, be much appreciated. And if I'm still alive, I'll check you out next time. Until then, may the gods watch over you. Bye-bye for now. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.